Hey guys, it's Sola. Today we're going to be having a look at some more stuff as we move down our plugins list. We're going to be, we're, we've moved on to uh, generators, which is actually one of the more exciting uh, section of plugins because a generator basically works, it does what it says on the tin, it generates something. So uh, here I have, uh, I'm going to expand this palette somewhat, get rid of our brushes up here and uh, move these up. Okay, so like I said, a generator generally works in in terms of you want to have something to generate on. So, but usually I would go to layer new solid and just make a solid because, and it doesn't matter what color it is, that like I can make this uh, red, blue, pink, it doesn't really matter because once you, uh, the thing with generators is they create completely new effects and so you're not really gonna see the solid itself the only thing the solid is, is a container for the effect, which is the first thing to get your head around. Like for instance, we're going to start with four color gradient here, which is one of the ones I use a lot. And you can see, even though we're on a red solid, as soon as I throw my effect on here, we've just got different colors. And the, the four color gradient is so powerful because, uh, okay, by default, the colors here are not great, but let's, let's remove um, some colors here. You're going to want some kind of symbiosis between the the color so this this blue is not really working for me if I bring this into um, more of a yellow and then we're gonna bring this green to more of an orange and there you know we've got something that's way more interesting and the great thing about this is you can move as long as you have the effect selected you can move these knots around and really play around with how this effect so now even though it's a four color gradient we've got more yellows at the top and then an orange to a pink at the bottom and we can recede the pink, we can move the pink more towards the middle. If we made this orange, uh, we color pick the pink, we could just have like a whole bottom uh, worth of uh, pink and then uh, we can move this around. And you can see here the best thing about this effect is the lovely kind of blending we're getting in between the colors. Even more so if you change your project to 16 bits. I mean, it's gonna be hard to see, but just know that if you uh, zoom in, the blending between here is just gonna be a lot nicer and smoother. I'm gonna go back to eight though. Um, so that's a really good effect because once you've made it, uh, you can also blend it between, uh, if we come to opacity, opacity is kind of pointless. So you would have to use the compositing options and you can then apply this blending mode. Now the reason we have these is in case you apply this four color gradient onto some footage. So let's take our classic lips footage and bring it in here. Now instead of pasting the effect onto a solid, I'm gonna paste it onto our footage. Now we can see it's done exactly the same thing, but now you have the, the blend option. Um, not the blend option, the opacity option. Oh, this is really weird. Um, but you can overlay it. Um, and it's gonna do a kind of similar thing. So we can see it's basically attempting to blend the gradient and you have all these, you know, you should be starting to be familiar with all these blend modes now. So you get, you get a kind of like cool effect and you can see dynamically what it looks like. The way I would do this though is I would just usually put it on a separate layer because that way at least um, you've got the control of, you can bring down the opacity some more and you can uh, maybe make one a light turn and then make the other one like a color dodge and then bring this one down and all this kind of business and really like fine tune the effect to get the look that you want. So uh, four color gradient, like one of my favorites, definitely for colorizing stuff, uh, big advocate of using that. So uh, we're gonna come back to our solid. We're gonna delete four color gradient. So we've just got our blank and we're gonna have a look at advanced lightning. Now this effect is really cool and th this whole plugin section is so vast that I'm probably going to cover most of them so we're going to have to split this into a few days if that's all right with you guys. Um, so here we have the the lightning and what you can do is if we twirl up all these options down we have the, the, the forking. Uh, be very uh, careful how you pronounce that. Uh, and we have the so we have the forking which is the kind of like branches that come off. Now by default these colors are pretty horrible so we're going to make this uh, more like a neon, neon blue, maybe. And then we'll put this on black, just so we can see the effect better. So uh, as you can see, 
it already looks pretty convincing and you, the, you can use this for so many we've got the direction you got the strike which is um, kind of different because it's like point A to point B you've got the breaking one which will follow the point but actually like split out as well you've got the omni which is kind of like a ball almost um, and what this will do is if we move along I believe we need the conductivity state and you can just animate that over time which will get this kind of um, you know just basically make the whole thing move so if I I'm gonna apply a little time expression here uh, just that should do fine and so then that way when we're dragging along we can see things moving around and uh, you know you've got different options you can play with the core strength of the thing uh, if we do Omni this will literally go from point A to anywhere around the screen uh, I don't yeah this affects the distance from the middle so the closer you have it to the middle so if you bring this off the screen it can essentially just go anywhere so you could put this within a crystal ball it would look pretty cool um, anywhere is literally like not even forking it will just literally like branch off to anywhere and then the vertical is as you would expect and then you got the uh, two-way strike which allows you to, so this is uh, if you can imagine like a pair of hands and you would have the energy in between the hands just kind of um, you know uh, I, I, that's as far as I would go with it so if you would have a hand here hand here and uh, you can have this energy like flowing between the two hands and and then you know you got all these options obviously these two are the two knots that have been moving around uh, the car radius is the, the actual inner strength so if you look at the actual strength if I bring it to nothing you've just got you can see how this effect is built basically we've got the car which is this white branch and then you've got a kind of uh, what looks like the effect which has been tinted blue and then it's just got some kind of fast blur over it just to give fit, uh, the, the kind of glow and we can bring the glow like right down so that's really subtle so this is probably something I would do and then I might be inclined to add a separate glow to it and then that way I can really feather that separate glow out and have two layers of glow which is a lot more powerful than just having one and having it all constrained within the plugin um, so yeah I would definitely bring the glow opacity like down quite low and definitely the radius quite low as well then you got the turbulence this is how like crazy it is the forking like I said is how many branches come off so if you bring it down to zero you'll have this like really simple one and if you bring it up to like somewhere closer to the maximum you're gonna have this super complex net which is uh, really cool you can decay the main car so this will be like as you move away from the two branches you're gonna see um, it's gonna kind of lose energy and then if you twirl down expert settings you've got the complexity which is as you would expect like how many branches if you bring it down simple you can almost have this um, this waveform look which is a completely different look but um, obviously you're generally going to want I don't think like bring it up to 10 really helps uh, I, I like to keep it somewhere like 4 or 5 because that way you get like a nice mixture between these smooth branches if you actually analyze some pictures of lightning you'll see that branches um, generally tend to be no more complicated than this maybe like you could even keyframe the uh, complexity up and down like there's so many options to play with it and then you have the minimum fork distance which is uh, how you know how far this minimum so as you uh, move it up you're going to see that a lot less of these are appearing because the minimum distance uh, which is from the main core is basically if they're not built above this then they just don't appear so the lower you bring it the more you're going to see of them and then uh, you have this semi-linear this is the kind of spline you have the spline one so if you bring that down to one now you're going to see this kind of smooth it's a lot smoother than uh, the linear or the semi-linear so um, if you are looking to create this kind of waveform look I would be inclined to change it to spline just know you're not really gonna have a lot of control over it as well but it's a it's, cool, it's a really cool plugin because uh, like I said there's it's one of the ones I ones that covered the most because I just think that there's so many things that can be done with it that's really worth 
Uh, this is the variation in the forks, like the opacities, you can see I move it up. It's just one of the ones where um, you, the more you play with it, the more powerful it becomes. And again, it's all about combining this. You could combine this with, um, if we go back to our distort menu, and we go to polar, uh, like uh, polar coordinates, and drop that on here and do the polar to rect, and then, not that one. I always get the wrong one. Um, and if we make this more from one side to the other, you're going to get this like round circle of energy, which can be quite cool as well. So uh, there we go. I've already covered two today, but like I said, I would like to go into these a bit more detail because I think getting to grips with the generators is a surefire way to, um, especially when you start creating motion graphics, to really start to create some cool shapes and things that you can move around and push and that are going to add some complexity to your to your compositions and your animations so uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll be back with more generators tomorrow